about a week ago now, I had an online dating client reach out to me on Facebook and he linked me to an article. Well, what this article was, it was, it was a link to a, a, a bunch of research released by Hinge, the online dating company, the, the swiping app, showing what kinds of photos would get a lot of right swipes and what kinds of photos would get a lot of left swipes. And so I was sitting here thinking, this is a really fantastic article. Let me read through this carefully and see what they've discovered. However, I've got a very keen nose for statistics. And so today's video is both about showing you what Hinge has put out there into the world, but also why we have to be so very careful when we're shown statistics and information from companies who want to make a, a commercial statement. Uh, because uh, there's something seriously askew with some of these official numbers that they've put out here. And I want to show you them and help you to understand how to be careful about statistics when you see research like this in the future. So first things first, I'm gonna have my phone out a lot today. So if you think that's unprofessional tough titties, but I'm gonna be talking a lot about this article. So I need to see it live as I'm talking about it. The first thing that I saw in the article was right at the top. And they said, today Hinge published the results of an in-depth study analyzing member photos to reveal which pictures get the most likes. To determine the results, Hinge data scientists assigned 35 unique photo tags, for example, smiling with or without teeth, hair up, hair down, etc., to a random sampling of a thousand photos. Okay, so I've got a concern here straight off the bat, okay, because I've got a nose for statistics and I used a statistics calculator. Forget 35 different tags. If we just looked at, say, one variable, that might be sunglasses on or off. If I want to have a 95%, if I want to be 95% confident in my results and I want my results to be accurate within 3%, right? So 6% total variation. If I want to be 95% sure of that, then I'm going to need 1,058 samples. That's just for one aspect to be statistically accurate, right? But there are 35 different tags being looked at. And not only that, each of those 35 things interacts with everything else, right? It's all well and good to say sunglasses make a positive or a negative impact. What if it's sunglasses and I'm smiling a lot? What if it's sunglasses I'm smiling and it's, and it's, it's a professional photo? What about sunglasses smiling with a great body on the beach, right? All these different aspects play a role and they, they, they're not independent, right? They, they rely on each other to give you some sort of a result. So you need, in my head, I think you'd surely need much more than a thousand people. So I thought I'd reach out to some friends who know more about statistics than I do. And this is the result that I got when I put up this post. The answer I got was, ah, okay, I see. Well, typically such problems can be modeled quite effectively using a high dimensional support vector machine. It is not appropriate to use in in inferential statistics for such a problem because data points are not normally distributed. Data points not probabilistically independent and homocedasticity unknown. The ultimate test of the predictive value of such a model is whether it is able to take test cases and accurately identify when a woman swipes right. That is not something which can be inferred without access to a training data set and test data set. But generally, a support vector machine... Okay, I'm not going to read out the whole thing because the simple answer is this. To actually separate each of those 35 tags in this test would be insanely difficult and require quite a lot of predictive modeling to be done first to even begin to separate these two out. It is not a simple, there's not an equation I can plug the numbers into to work out what sample size you need. It's not immediately obvious, but the end result is, yeah, odds are they didn't do it. So let's have a look at the results and see what we get. And by the way, I'm saying this stuff to you, not because I want to give you a crash course in statistics, because I want you to first of all see that... <sighs> Statistics are complicated beasts, right? They're not at all as obvious as it can first seem. And unfortunately, statistics can lie or, or they can mislead or deceive. And so let's see what we got. So let's have a look here. The very first slide shows this, right? Here are the best and worst photo practices. And we see, hey, if you participate, have photos of you participating in sports, that's great. Enjoying a night out, that's great. Showing your smile, that's also a good thing. I agree with all that. That's pretty good. They say wearing sunglasses is bad, using Snapchat filters is bad, and posing with a possible significant other is also bad. I agree with all this. So far, we're off to a really good start. I mean, those percentages there seem a little bit extreme to me, but let's go with it and, and, and go a step further. So now we look at best photo practices for women. So not guys, women first, right? What are they saying? Okay, here's where they start to lose me. A woman with her hair up is 25% more likely to receive a like as compared to with her hair down. 
wait up, <laughs> hold up. Let me just quickly show you some photos, guys. If you have a look at some of the photos I'm showing up here, women with their hair up or hair down, who is instantly more attractive to you? I don't need to do a poll to work out because Hollywood's worked out, because Glamour magazines have worked out, because everyone has worked out. The men find women more attractive and seductive and, and feminine when their hair is down as opposed to when their hair is up. And it's no surprise that in Hollywood movies, when they want a woman to look professional and be less sexualized by their male viewers, she puts her hair up tight behind her, pulled back. When they wanted to be sexy and seductive and attractive, they put their hair down, right? We know this. We know this for a fact. Now, I can't tell, I can't work out my head how they would have ended up with this hair up um, example. I have a theory that I'm going to come back to later. I've got a theory how they, because I don't think Hinge lied to us. I think this is real results, but I just think it's misleading. And I'm going to come back to it in a second why I think it is. They suggest that a woman looking away gets more, is more likely to receive a like. Again, I feel 74% is, is, is more than, yeah, 74% more. It's more than one and a half times more likely. Again, look at these photos. A woman looking at the camera, a woman looking away from the camera, right? Which feels more intense and attractive to you? As you're watching, I know this isn't scientific right now, but there is a good bit of research on this stuff. It doesn't stand to what we experience in the real world. Moving on. Um, a woman smiling with teeth is 76% more likely to receive a like. I could buy into that. Percentage seems a little high, but I'll buy into that. A woman standing alone is 69% more likely to receive a like. I definitely buy into that too. I have that exact same experience. When you see a woman, there's lots of women in the same shots, like, shit, which one are you? This is annoying. Or when she's with a guy, right? Stuff like that. It's just, yeah, definitely. Have a photo alone. That, that, that's that's always, almost always a better option for a chick. Okay, let's move on. Best photo practices for men. Smile without teeth. You're 43% more likely to receive a like. Hmm. Uh, looking ahead. You're 102% more likely to receive a like if you're looking at the camera than if you're looking away. Now, in case you're, you're not 100% sure, 102% more likely doesn't mean 2% more likely. It means just over twice as likely. So that is suggesting that if my first photo, I'm looking at the camera, or if I'm looking here, 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 I'm going to get twice as many women swiping right at me. Mm -mm, don't buy it. Don't buy it for a second. But it's interesting that that's the statistics that they found. Um, the other thing they found is if you stand alone, you're 11% more likely to receive a like. I can buy into that one. But here's the thing with the looking away and looking at the camera. Here's what I suspect. And I suspect this is coming into the smile without teeth as well. It's not that smiling without teeth, that if I go have a smile, or if I have a smile, makes a difference. What I'm saying, what I'm, I believe is confusing their data is what kinds of photos are going to feature a man smiling without teeth and looking directly at the camera? So what's going to be overrepresented if you just take that subset is professional modeling shots. So professional modeling shots of guys who are already really good looking, hence the general getting professional modeling shots. A lot of those photos, what they have is a smirk, not a full on smile. And what they are is looking at the camera intensely, head slightly tilted, looking directly at the camera with a smirk on their face, right? They're less likely to be looking away from the camera, laughing, smiling, being really happy. So that's my guess as to one of the examples of what could be skewing this data is because they are inadvertently by saying, well, let's look at all the photos where you're smiling without teeth and looking directly at the camera, they're isolating professional shots, more likely than not. So that's just a, it's a guess as to what's confounding that data. I think some of my guesses are going to be more on the nose than others, but let's go on. Okay, here we go. The next slide. Women are 166% more likely to receive a like on a sports related photo. Hold up. <laughs> if I have a photo of a woman playing tennis, I'm not instantly more attracted to her because she's playing tennis. This is a weird one. I got my suspicions, but let's go on. Let, 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 let's have a little further. Men are 45% more likely to receive like on a sport related photo. That makes more sense to me because men who play sports are generally considered to be more uh, uh, dominant, uh, aggressive, you know, kind of sexually aggressive in a sexual, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an attractive way, healthy, in good shape. I can see that there, 45% seems much more likely than 166%, but I'm going to go on for a second. I want to show you one more before I talk about this. Beach photos are a bummer. Women are 47% less likely to receive a like on a beach photo. Hold up. So what this is saying, bear with me. This is suggesting a woman in a bikini on the beach is less likely to make me want to swipe right 
than a woman who is playing tennis or a woman who's playing, I don't know, soccer or rugby or some other sport. What? Right? Not only that, three times, 166% more likely if they're in a sport photo and 47% less likely on the beach. So we're suggesting three times, 200%, three times less likely to swipe on a bikini photo at the beach than a chick playing a sport. What the hell, people? What the hell? <laughs> and this is, this is again, this is like the ghost in the statistics. <sighs> what do I suspect happening here? I suspect that they've said women in the gym, in yoga pants, doing stuff like this is a sport, right? So they've said women like this are more likely to get a right swipe, okay? But that makes sense because women who do that are far more likely to be in really good shape. They're far more likely to have more narcissistic style photos that make them look really amazing than the fact that it just happens to be a woman playing a sport, right? It's, it's again, it's filtering for the type of women to be doing that activity. When we go down to the beach photos with the women, again, something that I suspect is getting missed in this data is I have seen this a number of times. So I live in a beach area right now, right? So most women's profiles, 70% have a beach photo of them in a beach. Or what I notice myself is it highlights if her body is less than ideal, it, the beach photo highlights the fact that her body is more average, more, uh, you know, less than ideal. Um, and what happens is it makes me more likely to suddenly go, oh, now I'll swipe left. That can have that impact. But if she's got a good body, if she's in great shape, <laughs> swipe right, right? So this type of data becomes very confusing. It makes any woman reading this think, oh, I shouldn't have a beach photo of myself. But actually, no, you should have a photo of yourself on the beach. If you look really good on the beach, then you should have that photo. It's missing that point. It makes women feel like you should have a sports photo of yourself, but you shouldn't. But a gym's shot of you in you know, yoga pants, yoga outfit, doing gym, looking really great. <clears throat> that would be great if you've got one of them around. Um, so yeah, it's, it, is, it is misleading and it's confusing and they haven't teased out the real meaning behind the data that they've got here. So here they said that men are 80% less likely, likely to receive a like on a beach photo, which, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that either. Only because I've seen a lot of male profiles with beach shots that get really high thumbs up, especially if he surfs. He's got a picture of him with a surfboard or him on like surfing in the water. Photos like this, psh, they get a whole ton of matches. And so again, there's a lot of detail that's missing there that can make men feel like, oh, I better... 80%, that's almost half the results. I'd better remove those photos from my profile and get a better result. So it's again, it's where data is misleading. It's, they're not lying, but they're not really thinking about what the data, the story that the data tells you. You feel like I'm getting frustrated yet? I hope you are because I am getting frustrated. But if I go on, the next slide says, okay, keep your selfies to yourself. Selfies are 40% less likely to receive a like. Bathroom selfies are 90% less likely to receive a like. I agree with this. I don't think that these numbers are high enough. Why? Because again, what they didn't do was separate the genders, which they should have done, right? Because if a guy has a selfie shot, I'd say it's double. I'd say it's 80%. Any selfie shot is 80% less likely to get results. Because I've seen that in practice. Selfies destroy a guy's profile. Selfies in a woman's profile? Eh. They usually do just fine. And so these numbers aren't stated enough because they didn't divide the genders. So again, a woman reading this sees this and thinks, I shouldn't use selfies, but actually it's the man who should get that message, not the women. The last one is, I think I, I, I kind of pretty much understand why this is so crazy. It says, 3% of photos on Hinge are in black and white. Black and white photos are 106%. That's more than twice is likely to receive a like. So what that suggests is all of you should go out right now, take your main photo and just apply a black and white filter and you're good to go. You're going to get twice as many matches. Do any of you believe that's going to happen? Of course you don't. Why? Why did they get these results? The reason they got these results, again, is because without meaning to, they, by focusing on black and white photos in the way they have, they've selected for professional shots. Because on the whole, Professional photographers are the ones who provide you with black and whites. So they've, while not all black and white photos that people put up are professional, far more of them are likely to be professional shots. And so they've inadvertently made it sound like just making the photo black and white makes you more likely to get a match. But actually, it's having high quality professional shots and going to make you more likely to get a match. And they missed that. So in all this data, they've really confused people. And I think they've really led a lot of people astray by making weird assumptions. And this is so often the problem with statistics. I 
I'm a maths person. I love maths. I love data. I love probability and statistics are the two areas I love the most. And that makes me sound really geeky because I'm a closet geek. But I also get really frustrated by public statistics. You know, when it's in the paper, oh, the statistics just got released or, oh, Hinge released this result, Beats Art released this result, whatever. You need to remember that there's a story being implied from the numbers and that there are multiple explanations that could be applied. And uh, with the exception of peer-reviewed scientific papers, even a lot of science papers, because scientists get fooled by statistics a lot as well, because statistics are fecking complicated things. So it is really easy to get fooled by numbers and statistics. It really, really is, no matter how well educated you are. And so, yeah, that's why there's that a big reason why the peer review process exists as well, so that other minds who are less biased can look at the numbers and go, oh, wait up, something's going wrong with statistics. And so, yeah, that's a really important thing to do. Be careful about what you believe from what you read. Um, be doubly careful if it feels wrong, but also be doubly careful if it feels too right. Like it really feels like it feeds a narrative inside yourself that you want to believe because statistics are dangerous, dangerous things. And so I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I hope you didn't find out too negative. You know, I work as a dating coach. I've done so for 12 years and I help guys not just within in the real world approaching, but also with online dating, especially now with all the craziness going on. Um, I, I have an online dating course where I literally teach guys how to build an amazing profile, what photos to pick, what to write in your profile, and especially how to game the system, game the online dating system, because it really is understanding how the matching system works and how to get people to match with you, how to deal with, how to get results if you're from an ethnic minority or an ethnic background that isn't as popular in your area, because there's, there's different ways to use the online dating systems. Things like Hinge, Tinder, Bumble, all these other um, online dating programs that you tend to have as apps or online, I'll teach you how to do that. Now, right now, why was the, the whole world is still in a bit of chaos? There is a fantastic deal going. You can check it up out up here. But essentially, if you sign up at the moment, uh, at least within a few months of doing this course, let's say two months, you're safe. You can sign up. You can do the entire course. You'll pay up front. But if you finish the course within a month, and that's not so hard to do, there's only about four hours of content there, and you just have to show that you've changed your profile and applied what I've taught you. If you do that within a month you will get an email from me saying, congratulations, would you like a full refund, a partial refund, or would you like to leave me with all the money? And it's not based on how happy you are with it, it's based on how you're doing financially, right? So I'm not saying only ask for a refund if you weren't happy, I'm saying if you're struggling with money, get a full refund, get a partial refund. I wanna make it possible for guys to work on this part of their lives right now, in spite of the fact that still lots of people are struggling. So take advantage of this because this offer, as I said before, won't go on forever. Check it out in the link up there and in the comments below. As always, guys, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, check that little bell icon, check out some other videos if you like this one. There's a damn good chance you'll like them as well. As always, take care, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.